Okay. In case you are interested, we're going to work on exercise one. I've already posted the data on Canvas. On Canvas, so you can. Uh, we're going to use Excel stack to do this one. So uh, feel free to load the data on your computer, and so we can work on it together later on. Okay. Great. Great. Okay. So what I want you guys to do is uh, I want you to go over the wording of the question. Maybe some of you have already loaded the data, right? Okay. So I want you to go over them carefully, and after you are done with reading the question, I want you to tell. I want you. I want you to share with us. Do you think this is a a pair? You know, I have like several uh, choices here for you guys to to think about it. Okay. So I'm going to launch the pool. Uh, sorry, launch the poll, and uh, so you guys can vote after you are done with reading the question. So the first thing is to determine what kind of a test do we have. Are the samples independent? Okay, good, good, great. Okay, so let's take a look. So uh, most of students were able to tell this is a matched pair, right? How do I tell it's a matched pair? The reason is because for each player, we collect two different scores, a first round score versus the final round, which is the fourth round score. So the same player, we collect two pieces of information, a first and also a final round of information. Right, okay. So you, hopefully you're able to see um, the observations, the first column and the second column, they are related because they are actually collected from the same individual, same individual, right, same individual. So this is gonna be a paired sample, paired sample. And, uh, and it's a paired test. It's a paired sample, it's a paired test as well. This is the screen I want to share you with you guys. Okay, so how do we carry out if we are doing the hand calculation? We know it's a pair test. So what you need to do is uh, it's going to be numerical data. It's going to be the very last page is right here. So for match the sample, you're going to use the formula right here. So this is the formula you need. Okay, so what you probably remember from the, uh, from the slides is you have to create, you have to create a new column which represents the difference the difference, the data we have is two columns, the first round versus the final round. But you have to create a new column which represents the difference. And once you do that, you have to compute the average of all the differences. And then you have to figure out the standard deviation, which is SD for all the differences. Okay, I'm going to show you two methods. One is how you can do it using hand calculation. The second one is how you can carry out using Excel stat. Okay, so uh, I'm going to share. Uh, share my, uh, my data with you. This is also uh, posted on Canvas as well. So th this is the data we have. We have two columns, first round, 20 players. Okay, second round as well. Because we know it's a pair of samples, so what we need to do is you want to figure out the difference. The difference, and uh, hopefully you guys are expert uh, in Excel. It just, I'm gonna tap in equal to, click on this one minus this one, right? I'm gonna press enter. Okay, you don't have to do the same thing for, you know, you, you don't have to do the same thing for all of them. You don't have to type it out. Do any of you know the tricks to do it for the entire column? How, to, how do you do the same function for the entire column? Okay, if not, I'm, uh, so some different ways to do it. Some other students might think, okay, once you, as you calculate the first row, what you can do is you can drag it down. You drag it to the very last column, last row, and then you'll be done. So this is one way to do it. I'm going to teach you a second trick to do it. And I'm gonna teach you more cool Excel tricks if you are in my 375 class. Unfortunately, uh, right now it's 275. Okay, so another way to do it is you put your mouse to this green cell here until you see a, until you see a black arrow, uh, sorry, black cross. You guys are probably see it, black cross. And then you're gonna double click the left uh, mouse button, double click. And that's gonna fill in for the rest of the columns. Okay, I'm gonna do it again. Some of you guys uh, seem to be interested. Okay, so put your mouse to the lower right corner until you see a black cross. Right now I'm using a Mac, but I'm sure if you're using a PC, the same function applies as well. Until you see a black cross, double click your mouse bot button. Uh, I think if you, uh, mouse button, if you're using a Mac, you're using a track, and I think it's uh, two fingers uh, double, uh, tap twice, two fingers. Okay, great, I'm gonna do it here and then you're gonna see everything carry forward. Okay, so this is our difference column, difference column. I'm gonna highlight it in yellow to remind me this is a different column. What we need to do if we are doing hand calculation, 
The first thing is we will figure out the mean of this one because we need that for our for, uh, formula. So average, uh, just select this column. Okay, make sure you stop here. And then the next one is the standard deviation, right? Standard deviation, that's equal to STDE, STDEV. Okay, the same cells here. Make sure you don't you don't uh, you don't want to uh, use the row for me as well. You don't you want to stop at minus one. Okay, so this is the mean. This is standard deviation. Once we calculate that, uh, we can plug them into the formula we have, and we can carry out the uh, calculation using hand, right? Okay, and you could also do the same thing using your calculator, whatever ways that work for you. Okay, so this is one way to carry out this hypothesis task. I'm gonna show you a different way. I'm gonna to demonstrate to you how you can do that using, uh, using Excel stat. Okay, so the first thing is what I want to do is I want to go back to the, uh, to the slides we, we had earlier on. Okay, so I'm doing a new share and it's right here. Okay, here we are. This is the data. We are concerned with the first round, final round, and let's do that. So Excel stat, okay. Parametric test, it might be a little bit smaller for you. I'm not sure whether you're able to see. Okay, so it's a two sample, you guys see it. Two sample t-test, z-test, this is what you need. The first two, the second two. Okay, click on that. Okay, you're gonna see a dialog box that's right here. Okay, so typically uh, for Excel stat, if you, re if you click on the lower left button, it's gonna reset. For example, if you already done the test before, so there may be some information saved here, you don't want that to happen, you want to reset it. So I always like to uh, click on it. And so now you have to determine what is our sample one and two. So sample one is the first round. Uh, make sure you only cover, you only highlight the cells that you need. The second sample is right here. Okay, you want to make sure you stop on the 20th uh, player right, right here. Okay. And so the data format, we have uh, not independent samples, but paired samples, right? Paired samples. And we do have column labels, which represents the headers here, the headers here. Okay, and uh, we should use a student t-test, student t-test. Options, okay. Are we comparing to see whether there's a, um, there's a difference or not? So you have several choices, let's see. Okay, oh uh, well. Uh, I think you should have several choices, but uh, my screen is splitting. I'm not sure whether you're able to see there. You have a, a two-tail test, lower tail and upper tail. And so what we are doing, I think is a two-tail test. I think we are doing a two-tail test. Uh, uh, let, let me rewrite a question. Okay, well, you know, to be honest, do you think it's a two-tail test or not? Is this a two-tail test? Okay, is this a two-tail test? Who wants to give it a try? Um. I think it is a two-tail test. Oh, actually, sorry, I yeah. wasn't paying attention. It's upper tail because it's testing to see if the scores will go Exactly, up. it's an upper tail test, all right? It's an upper tail test. Okay, so let's see. And uh, so uh, it's an upper tail test. I'm gonna go back to the, uh, to the Excel stat uh, screen. So we have to choose this. This is an upper tail test. So uh, I think uh, we're gonna pick this one. We're gonna pick the mean one minus mean two is less than D. Am I right? Is this right? This looks like a lower tail test because you know you wanna look you wanna think carefully what the question asks for. The question says whether whether the final round is higher than the first round. So that means the first round is lower than the final round. So the first mean one is less than mean two. Right? So it should be this one. Okay, uh, any questions on this part? Does it matter that like, it says after that, that or does the increased player concentration cause scores to come down? Uh, sorry, could you say that again? Like after it, uh, it says, does the pressure playing the final round cause scores to go up or does it oh, okay, cause okay. to come down? Like, would that make it a two-tailed? That's a good question, good question. Uh, when I was working on this uh, yesterday, I actually used a two-tail test. But today, when I was reading the first line, it looks like it's a one-tail test. Well, maybe, uh, I guess the question, uh, well, if I'm setting the question, I will only uh, use one of those two lines and not, not both. 
No, but okay. I think uh, I think you are right. It should be a two-tailed test. Sorry, my bad. It should be a two-tailed test because we should read both of them together, not 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 just one. My bad. So it should be a two-tailed test. It should be a two-tailed test. So I was wrong. This part it should be uh, not equal to, not equal to, right? Okay. So right now we do have a uh, we do have a choice to change the d the difference between those two to any number we like. I think we're just talking about whether there's a difference or not. So I'm gonna just leave it as a zero. Some other time, maybe the questions say whether the final round, the score increased by five points, you're gonna change this to five, but right now it's zero. And uh, I'm gonna use the asymptotic p-value here. Missing data, you can just leave it as it is. I'll put, uh, it's not really, it doesn't really matter. And uh, uh, I'm gonna put a comparison plus here. I don't think, uh, you know, sometimes some of the plots from Excel stat are pretty interesting and easy, uh, helpful to for our understanding. So I like to leave them there. I'm going to click OK. So it's going to take a while for Excel stat to display the results. OK, I'm going to zoom in. And uh, you guys probably uh, remember, I like to click on the second one here. This is going to uh, make the presentation much cleaner because all the gray lines disappear. Okay, so there's a bunch of information we have. For the first round, uh, the mean is about 71. And uh, for the second round, the final round, the mean is about 71.8. So there's a marginal increase, not a huge increase. The final round is uh, indeed higher, but not by a lot. Okay, so that's why we have to carry out a statistical test to see whether it's indeed much higher. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is the output we get from Excel stat, and I like to take a screenshot of this one into my report because this part is helpful. Okay, let's take a look at what else we have before we go into the interpretation. Okay, I have two box plots here. This is the first round. The left one is the first round, and second one is the final round. So you can see, well, you know, it's difficult to tell. That the right cross here represents the mean, represents the mean. So you can see the mean for the final round is a little bit higher but not by a lot, right? Not by a lot. And so, uh, so this is what we have. And I'm gonna go back to the table. We have this part is super useful. Okay, so when we are doing a test this day, we do have to make sure we have, uh, we're not doing hypothesis testing. We do have to make sure we have a test this day. The test this is given here. Uh, it is a minus, uh, minus 0 0.3. So this is a test at this day. As you can probably remember, this is a fairly close to zero. I mean, unless it is very far away from zero, it's difficult to tell the, the difference is significant. And this actually can be, uh, can be checked by using our p-value. The p-value we have here is a two-tailed test. It's 0.767, it's very, very high. So we know we're probably gonna be, we're probably gonna fail to reject, right? Fail to reject, fail to reject. And the degrees of freedom is just, 20 minus one. Even though we have 40 observations in total, but we actually have 20 pairs of observation. As you remember, we have 20 pairs of observation. So that's gonna be 20 pairs minus one pair, that's gonna be 19 pairs, 19 pairs. So as I took a screenshot of what we have, this is exactly what we had. I also write it out of what is the test statistic and also p-value. Uh, and so I'm gonna answer because the p-value is huge, it's about 77%. There's a no significant difference between the average scores of the first and also the final rounds, right? So there's no difference between them. They are about the same for two tail tests. They are about the same. This part shouldn't be too difficult. So the next one, the remaining part is a little bit tricky, you know, uh, somewhat tricky. And so part B, you were asked, what is the point estimate of the difference between the first round and the final round? Okay, so all you need to do is to use the first round average minus the final round of average, and that's gonna be minus 0.3. Okay, you can do this by looking, by taking a look of your Excel. You can do that by taking a look of your Excel. So you should be able to do that by uh, taking a look of Excel. So we know that the first round mean is 71.5. The final round is 71.8. Uh, so you can use the first one, subtract the second one. That's going to give you the difference, right? You can do that. So everything has already done for you uh, using uh, by Excel stats. So this is, this is neat. 
Okay, so that's the reason we have here. Okay, and part C, you were asked, what is the margin of error for 90% confidence interval? Well, so we want to find a 90% confidence interval and uh, it's gonna be a different set of formula we have. Okay, I'm gonna show you here. And uh, so we're gonna go to the, uh, let's see, page three of numerical data. This is a match the sample and this is the formula, uh, sorry, this part. This part is the formula for the interval, a confidence interval. And you gotta do all the calculation here to, to be able to figure that one out. So we need a multiplier. We need a standard deviation of the differences. Okay, so this one. We also need the average of the differences. Okay, that's the reason I was asking you guys to, to create a new column, to create a new column, right? So this is the new column we created. We have the mean, we also have the standard deviation. You remember I did that, the mean and the standard deviation. And this will become super useful when we try to plug them uh, into the formulas we have. Okay, great, okay. So this is what we have here. Okay, so the mean is a minus 0.03, the standard deviation is about 4.477, uh, sorry, 4.4733. I'm gonna put them into my formula here. Okay, so the point estimate is this part, this is what we have here. And then I'm gonna put into the formula, which is the sample standard deviation over the square root of sample size. Remember, we have 20 pairs, that's the square root of 20. And all we left out with is finding out a multiplier. The multiplier is a T multiplier. So if a degree of freedom is 19, the multiplier is 1.729. I'm gonna quickly uh, show you how this can be done. Make sure you are using a T table. Degrees of freedom is 19, that's right here. 90% confidence interval, the upper tail is gonna be 5%, not a 10%, right? Remember, you gotta use the two tails. The left is 5%, the right tail is also uh, 5%. So 5%, uh, okay, so that's gonna be 1.729, 1.729. And uh, I'm gonna plug in here, and I was able to figure out this interval. Okay, so this is the final interval we have the final interval we have, right? Any questions on this part? I'm almost done, almost done. Is it all clear how I figure out the multiplier? Okay, okay, good. Okay, so I, I, like, to, I like to complete this exercise because uh, we had the same question before when the interval contains zero versus not. So the example I have here is indeed the interval contains zero, as you can see. So this interval is between is from negative two all the way to 1.4. So zero actually is between those two numbers, right? So this interval contains zero. Okay, so let's take a look at part D. Part D asks, could this interval, that means this interval right here, uh, could this interval have been used uh, to test the hypothesis in part A? So you were asked whether we can use the results from part C to answer the questions for part A. Part A is a hypothesis testing question. It is 5% significance. I, I know this is not indicated here, but typically if it's not indicated uh, in a question, the default is significance level alpha is 5%. So are we able to use a 90% confidence interval for this 5% hypothesis test? And the question, the answer is yes, is yes. Only the reason is because, okay, you were like 90 and 5%, those are not identical, you know, those are not uh, very much the same. And the reason is because 90% confidence interval, the 90% is right in the middle is 90%. So you have two corners, which are 5% each. Remember uh, when we were working on this 5%, uh, uh, this uh, two-tail test, we do have to uh, truncate it, right? We have to truncate it. Okay, so let's see. And all we need to do is we just have to check to see the confidence interval includes a different, includes a zero or not, includes a zero or not. If this interval indeed includes a zero, that's exactly what we have here. That means the difference between the first round versus the final round is not statistically significant. It is, if zero is in the interval, the difference is, uh, is not statistically significant. If it's zero is not inside the interval, it is statistically, sorry, statistically significant, right? Okay, that's what I'm trying to say. So it's really, all it matters is whether the zero is in your interval or not. 
as in your interval or not. 